I have played every single God of War game to date. I grew up with the fluidity and ferocity of swinging the mighty blades of chaos. And so when I saw the direction of the new God of War with its over-the-shoulder camera and axe as a primary weapon, a weapon known for being slow and methodical, you can bet your ass I was skeptical. But then this happened, and it changed everything. As for the dead, your frost axe will be useless. You'll need to find something else. Then I must return home. Dig up a past I swore would stay buried. Let me ask you a question. Think back to when you first acquired the Blades of Chaos. No, not the moment where you possibly creamed your pants, but the moment just before that. How far had you upgraded the Leviathan Axe and Guardian Shield just before you acquired the Blades? I don't know about you, but it just so happened that I had fully upgraded both just before I got them. I hypothesized that this was done on purpose. You see, up until now, the God of War series had the habit of giving the player a shitload of weapons. And while this provided plenty of weapon variety, it also limited the player's ability to truly learn and understand each weapon, often forcing players to divide their attention between multiple weapons at once. And so God of War flipped the script by limiting the weapon choice to just three primary weapons, the Leviathan Axe, the Guardian Shield, and the Blades of Chaos, with the latter not showing up until much later in the game. So for a good chunk of the game, you technically have only two weapons. While this limits the player's weapon choice for sure, it also allowed them to learn each weapon's unique nuances, experiment with different skills, upgrade the various skill trees, and eventually master the respective weapons. So, by the time you do acquire the blades, the axe and shield no longer become a crutch, but a complement to your new toy. You discover that while the blades may be exceptional at crowd control, the axe still remains king at one-on-one, -on -one, and they don't nearly have the stun power as the guardian shield and your fists. And so, you may find unique ways to combine the strengths of each weapon, like locking on with the axe and using the blade's long-reaching attacks, or freezing an opponent with the axe and going ham on the other with your fists. These little discoveries may not have been able to happen if the weapons were not allowed to breathe, so to speak. If you played the previous titles in the series, you may have also noticed another prevailing aspect of the God of War franchise that has gone absent in this new entry, and that's the severe lack of ass and titties, ass and titties. No, that's not what I meant. Come on guys, Kratos has a kid now, gotta keep things PG. I'm talking about the fact that Kratos can't jump anymore. Seriously, unless it's contextual or for a special attack, Kratos cannot physically jump by himself. Guess that's what happens when you stab yourself in the stomach with a massive sword. You're probably not going to be as spry as you used to be. Ain't that right, Kratos? Okay then, never mind. Every God of War game without fail has featured aerial combat, and in taking this away, I do feel you lose some of the charm and fun of launching yourself in the air and coming crashing down in a world of change like the graceful ballerina that you are. But what you do gain is a more controlled, grounded experience. And you can see this with some of the mechanical changes Santa Monica has made for this new entry. Like the over-the-shoulder camera, which was a point of contention for many people when it was first revealed, because it was such a drastic departure from the zoomed-out perspective we were so used to. But after finish the game, I can see the advantage of its implementation. That being that by limiting the player's vision, you force the player to essentially see what Kratos sees. So when you have your back turned on an enemy, you can no longer rely on the zoomed-out camera to know when they go for another strike. You only have your wits and your reflexes to make sure you don't get hit. And this surprisingly can make fights more intense and immersive, at least it did for me. You can find similar design philosophies in titles like Resident Evil 4, where the sluggish movement of the main character coupled with the limited point of view intentionally creates a tense atmosphere that causes the player to fear that which they cannot see. But that's not to say that the new camera doesn't have its downsides. I do feel that the new camera is perfect for the Leviathan Axe, 
because it allows players to truly get a sense of the weight, power and speed of each swing and throw that would not have had the same impact if the camera was in third person. But I do not feel that this goes over as well with the blades. The beauty of using the Blades of Chaos in the older games is that each attack was sort of like a dance of change that was emphasized so well with the third person zoomed out camera. So when you restrict the player's view, you lose some of the fun of using the blades in the first place. Another interesting aspect of combat that has changed is the dodge mechanic. Previously, your dodge was comprised of a generic roll that can be executed with the analog stick with minor differences based on what weapon you are wielding. This often disrupted the flow of combat because it would completely stop whatever attack you were in the middle of, forcing you to start over. The new dodge mechanic fixes this by introducing a dynamic dodge system. You still have your traditional role that can be used to evade attacks, but you now have a sidestep option that doesn't interrupt your attack string, while still allowing you to avoid taking a hit. This is a genius move on the dev's part. Now you don't have to duck and roll every time someone takes a swipe at you. Instead, you can focus on continuing your assault, as opposed to relying too heavily on parrying, which is definitely something we saw a lot of in the previous games. You can also see significant differences in the way your character reacts to attacks. In the older games, when you took damage, it would often be accompanied by some variant of a static animation with a bit of blood thrown in, which sometimes didn't even fit the nature of the attack. The new God of War is far more dynamic. Depending on the attack, craters can be staggered, thrown, knocked against a wall, even blocking attacks is far more realistic. In the older games, you can block and as far as Kratos is concerned, the sun could literally come crashing down from the sky and he would be just fine. Not in this version of God of War. Now your block is more directional. You may be able to block an attack in front of you, but you're totally exposed if someone lands a hit behind you. Blocked attacks also have weight to them, so Kratos will be pushed back from blocking heavy attacks and have his guard completely broken for unblockable attacks. Another change between this game and the games of prior is the new ways Kratos can attack. You have a reticle mode now that can be used for both the chains and the axe. For the axe, this allows Kratos to throw his axe and recall it at will. See, just watch. Ah, uh, shit. This allows for a completely new way of attacking never before seen in a God of War game. It opens up the game for new tactical strategies like throwing the axe against their feet to topple them over or getting a headshot so you can line up a more powered up throw. And the best part about it is that they made the recall part just as fun as the throw, as there are unique attacks that come with recalling the axe. The blades also get a similar treatment but vastly different in how they're implemented from the axe. Where the axe simply comprises of a light throw and heavy throw, the blade's light attack in this mode basically turns the blades into scorpion spear, where he can drag his opponents towards him, or send a wave of fire to burn his opponents where they stand. The heavy variant is probably one of my favorites, turning the blades into a full-blown whip that can be charged up for some added heat. These changes turn the weapons from basic hack and slashes into tactical strategic tools that can change the tide of battle. I love it. And on top of that, you have stances. Pausing between an attack with any of the three weapons causes Kratos to enter a unique stance. This enables him to execute attacks he normally wouldn't be able to perform. And interestingly enough, these stance attacks seem to contradict the main properties of the primary weapons. So the axe, which is not normally great for area control, turns into a flying boomerang that circles all around you in stance mode. The blades thrive with groups of enemies and aren't usually single enemy focused, but in stance mode, they turn into short range tools of destruction. Even the guardian shield and his fists, which normally have the shittest range of all, but in stance mode, he can literally fly across the fucking screen. And they just so happen to be balanced by the way the stances are executed. That pause in order to enter a stance is long enough to leave Kratos a little open to attack, and so players need to gauge carefully on when they can use it. I know in Joseph Anderson's critique of the game, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I highly recommend it, he made a three hour critique on the game, The Absolute Madman. He felt that the momentary pause to enter a stance slowed down the gameplay, but I personally disagree. I think it's important that there is some balance to combat so that players can't simply abuse unique mechanics, and feel rewarded when they're able to pull it off. But I do agree with him on the notion that the game tends to limit the player's creativity, there's only so much swinging, throwing and punching before it gets a little old, and if it wasn't for the blades, I would have probably dropped dead of boredom. 
It's not like there's not enough unique attacks to go around. There's actually plenty, but they're locked by runic attacks. Special weapon skills that come in light and heavy variants per weapon. But you only have two slots per weapon, and using them requires a recharge to use them again, during which you can't even swap them out. In the older games, these runic attacks, especially for the blades, were pretty much part of his normal moveset. And you know what, I kind of think I would have preferred this. I shouldn't have to choose between the Cyclone of Chaos and the Wrath of Artemis. I want both. Because I remember when I was playing the game, sometimes I would find myself biding my time on purpose so that the runic attacks would recharge, because they were often the highlight of most fights, at least for me anyway. I think the game could have benefited from allowing more than just two runic attacks per weapon, so that players have more freedom to be creative in the middle of a battle. I hope to see something like this in future titles. Now, you can't talk about the combat of God of War without talking about Atreus. Atreus plays an important part in this game, being your primary player companion who assists you in puzzles and combat through the Talon bow. In the beginning, he's able to fire arrows at your command, which will either automatically target the nearest enemy or whatever your reticle is pointing at. Later on, he gets an upgrade where he can shoot light arrows which deal additional damage, and lightning arrows which can incapacitate enemies. He can also insist in other ways through his melee attacks, where he'll jump in during certain combos to deal extra damage, and depending on the type of armor set you give him, can provide additional health at times. Now I think Atreus was implemented as best they could have in a God of War game. This isn't the first time God of War has featured a bow in their games, but I'd argue that using a bow back then, over fiery, dual-wielding whip chains from hell, was a bit of a tough ask. So the way it's incorporated here is much better and actually has some similarities to how it was used in the previous games as arrows were also able to juggle enemies in the air. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say that while Atreus does add a lot to the combat, essentially adding a second element you constantly have to keep in the back of your mind, ultimately when it comes right down to it, most fights involving Atreus involves pressing the square button a couple of times and then holding the square button every now and then for a runic attack. I mean, this isn't necessarily bad. I think Santa Monica has done a good job of making an assist character actually useful as opposed to being a bumbling mess like other games do. But considering they're able to implement three different attacks modes into a single weapon, I do feel there's some missing potential here. After all, this is the first game in a possible trilogy, so that gives plenty of time for the developers to flesh out this mechanic. And I look forward to what they come up with next, especially with his newfound god abilities. But there is one final aspect that I want to touch upon that completely changes the way I now look at the older games. A single mechanical change that has largely gone overlooked I feel, and that goes to the new status called Stun. Stun refers to a gauge underneath an enemy's health bar that quickly fills up the more you're able to successfully land hits in quick succession, until the point you're able to execute a finishing move with R3. In the previous games this was prompted with the circle button, but the difference is that unlike in the new game, the finishing prompt would only occur once a certain amount of damage was met, and this would vary based on the enemy type. So where the older games used damage to prompt the finisher, the new game uses stun. So what, right? Why does this matter? Well the issue is, with having a finishing prompt based on damage, this means that there's no incentive for the player to be creative. Technically, the player could easily just take pot shots at a distance and still activate the finisher prompt eventually. However, basing the finisher prompt on stun as opposed to damage, players are now given the opportunity to finish opponents early as long as they're able to maintain a consistent barrage of attacks, since stun works irrespective of the opponent's health. It's especially interesting because Santa Monica opted to omit the combo counter this time, when ironically this new change actually promotes maintaining your combo more than the elder games ever did, because there is now more incentive to do so. The stun mechanic isn't static either, because your fists actually deal more stun than both your axe and blades combined, and you get even more stun if you knock your enemies against the wall. This encourages the player to use the environment to their advantage, and to drop the blades and axe for a while to just punch things out. So my overall thoughts on God of War is that it's a game that really does challenge your expectations on what an action game should be. It attempts to evolve what has already been established in the former games while staying true to its roots. And while I'm going to miss the frantic hack and slash nature of the original trilogy, I do understand why it was necessary for Kratos and Santa Monica studio as a whole to evolve to a new level and breathe fresh life into an old franchise. 
I think God of War did a fantastic job at nailing the new aspects of this game, especially with the axe, but falls a little short in bringing back some of the traditional aspects. So for the new game, I challenge Corey and his team, now that they've laid down the foundation of the new formula, to take a step back to the past, to look at what the older games did well and create a new formula that is able to combine the weight and physics of the new with the bombastic frenzied chaos of the old. I look forward to that. Thanks for watching guys. This has been one of the longest videos I've ever made and it's a completely new take on the types of videos I generally make and uh, it's been interesting. Making the script alone was way too long. I don't know how Joseph Anderson did it. Three hours, what the fuck man? How did you do it? Um, feel free to leave your own thoughts on what you felt God of War did well and uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more like this and as always I appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.